Hi, welcome to Designing Pinball Machines. I need your help. I've got one theme that you can see on the screen, but I need more ideas. Can you guys help me out by designing something and take a picture and email it to me? Thanks, guys. Let's give you a starting point here. I've got an A4 page and we're coming across 12 and up three centimeters. Great, on that starting point, we're going to draw a flat square. Now remember in isometric, we use these splat angles to draw a square that's flat to the ground. So two down, two up, and there's a square. Going back to the original starting position, we're going to slide in this direction. Slide it until it lines up with that line, and then just one to draw there. So turn it upside down, line up those two corners, and draw again. So there's our first two boxes, and we're going to repeat. There's the starting point, one line to draw, flip, line up the corners, draw again. Cool. Same as before, line up the corners, draw, draw. If the back's missing, just use the splat like a rule to complete those. All right, new starting point. And to finish the last one, line up those two marks with the corners, bang, bang. Six boxes done. If yours is looking like mine, then well done, you guys. Uh, we're going to draw some lines from each corner now sketch them in lightly at first, and then we'll measure off how long. They're going to end up about a finger in length. So let's draw a line from each of the corners. Try and make sure you splat straight up and down if you're using it as a rule there. Now I've marked off about one centimeter, roughly in height, as long as they're all the same and rule out. Now these two corners here, we're going to join and the same on the very back. No need to do your lines as dark as I am. I'm doing them really dark so that you guys can see them. Don't fill that one in right at the back because you'll just have to rub it out. Going to extend two lines straight up. Doesn't matter how long because next I'm going to measure it. Let's mark off say four centimeters. And the one at the back needs to be the same length. Now those two dots will join and that will make a splat angle. Let's firm that one in. At this point, I'm erasing any lines that I don't need, including these ones that are hidden. I'm squiggling them out and now I'll erase them. Ready, set, go. How quick is that? Now take a look at these three points. One, two, three. We're going to need to extend those on the right splat angle. So we could draw a line out first. It's got to be maybe one, one and a half centimetres. I'm going to come back and measure those. So just give yourself a light line as a guideline. And grab a rule and mark off one centimetre, one and a half, whatever you're using. As long as they're all the same length, it'll look great. Now I'm going to join the ends of those lines with a straight line and a vertical line there, which means straight up and down. Now we're missing a leg here. So we're going to draw a long leg at the back. We're going to come down with a line and you can mark it as long as you like. I'm going to use mine two centimeters there. And at the front, it needs to be a slightly shorter leg. So let's mark off one centimeter. I've put a dot at the bottom of those, so we've got a reference. Okay, so from this one, I'm going to put the splat right on that dot, and I'm going to go, say, a centimetre each side, and then bring those lines down. That one will need to go. And at the end of that one, we're going to come up until it hits the line and disappears underneath. Don't worry if it's a little rough at this stage, we trace over it when we finish to fix it up. You guys draw your lines really lightly 
and um, it's heaps easier to do your rubbing out. I'm drawing dark so that you can see through the camera. Now this one is a bit different. Don't draw your left and right splat. It actually comes this way and that would be your original point there. So have a look now how I put the splat back on that spot right there and there's my right angle. Here's the flippers. Halfway along that line, put a mark. And we're going to go to that corner and draw a line to the mark. We're going to mirror the same thing out the other side. So from that mark, come out to that point and mark in a line. All right, good. Now, halfway along that line, draw a little ellipse. Remember, an ellipse is that shape if it's flat. So just a smaller version of that one and mark it in there. Find halfway along that line and do the same thing. That's pretty much where we drill our holes. So the next thing is, towards the inside more, draw an even smaller ellipse and then join them up. So that's our flippers. But they're only paper thin, they need to have some thickness. So remember, if I had a shape like that and I wanted to give it some thickness, I really just need to make a copy but slid further down. So I'm going to draw a line at each end, a curve, match it up. Line, line, make a copy of what's above it. Excellent. Remember, you will get a chance to tidy this up when you start colouring. Here's the launcher. A little cylinder and a length of timber that we used for the launcher arm. Now we're missing the shooter lane. So I'm going to draw a parallel line there. Start and stop it wherever you want. It's pretty much your design there. As long as you draw a vertical line at each end, that's what it needs to look like. Now in here, I'd probably leave that area free. The reason is when you hit it, the ball needs to be able to move in these directions and get up to the top of the field. So try and leave that reasonably free. So I'm going to draw up in this area a little bit more. I'm going to start off by drawing a ramp. Let's draw where the ramp would sit on the play field. So we're drawing a rectangle, but we're using the splat angles to draw the rectangle. Now from the back, I'm going to draw two vertical lines. Make sure they're the same length. To check, use the splat angle across, boom. Now we're going to finish the triangular shape by joining those two. Tilt the splat over and use it like a ruler if you like and join those two, and there's my ramp. But some of these lines will be hidden, so we'll erase those. Now, to be honest, I really struggle with um, drawing any types of animals, but what I do is just go to Google and do a Google search under how to draw cute kittens, kids tutorial, something like that, and you'll find lots and lots of tutorials. So I've got the eyes drawn in and it's the ears that make it kind of look a little bit feline. And then we're going to draw the sides. Maybe we'll extend that tongue out a bit longer. And there's my ramp. So let's erase the lines that we're not going to see. Some whiskers. And I think you can kind of see that it looks like a cat. I'm going to firm in the lines that I've accidentally rubbed out. Here I'm using the splat to give me a part of a circle. And this is a track. You could make it out of some wire that's been bent around. Gardening wire from the hardware is really soft and easy to bend. It probably depends more on what you've got lying around. If you had a bit of old hose and you split it in half, or if you've got some plastic containers, paper mache, whatever you like, guys, so I'm using a piece of plastic to stabilize it. Now I'm designing something to make the marble spin around uh, into the play field when it's launched. So whatever shape you draw, I'm dropping two lines down at the end and then I'm copying that exact shape, but I'm starting further down. 
So that's what it would look like, but part of it's hidden by the little wall there, so we'll take that out. Now I'm drawing a little bumper. Two cylinders with some sort of elastic band around it would do the job of keeping the ball bouncing into the play field. Let's repeat the same thing in a different spot here. Great. Now when you're drawing, this is your chance to get wildly creative and draw all sorts of stuff. But um, when it comes time to make it, I would probably make temporary bumpers and maybe blue tack them down. So you really don't know how it's going to behave until you've tried it. Here I'm using three ellipses overlapping to make uh, a kind of a top of a bumper. So here's my idea. I'm going to put lots of nails or pins straight down through this so that when the ball falls in the top, it finds its way out in lots of different possible directions. So you're not quite sure exactly where the ball's gonna come out. As for this backboard, it could be used for scoring. You can devise your own type of scoring mechanism. Um, some people might use a micro bit to do it electronically. It could be just somewhere that you um, display your theme artwork. When you finish your drawing, hopefully it's way different to mine and really exciting and I would love to see it. So if you can take a snap and email it in to me. I'd like to say never ever worry. If your drawings are rougher than mine, remember I've had lots of practice. So hopefully you can help me out with some ideas. Now here's a little speed up of um, adding a bit of color. I'm using art markers because it's fast. I've gone over mine with black pen as well. It um, tidies up all those outlines that you don't need to be so worried about just uh, in light pencil. All right, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe, guys. Thanks very much. Bye.